Hi, this is Phil Chandler. Today I'd like to talk to you about a substance that, if you're a beekeeper, you will have come across for sure. If you're not a beekeeper, then there may be some uh, interesting information in here that you haven't got from other sources yet, I don't know. Uh, that substance I'm talking about is uh, propolis. This here is propolis. It's a kind of sticky goo um, and it's in the, uh, the sort of temperatures we've got at the moment. Uh, it's, um, well, as you can see, it's soft and malleable and it goes when it gets cold it goes rock hard. So what is propolis and what do the bees do with it and why do they make it? Okay so let's look at a typical frame and see how the bees use propolis on it and you can see straight away that the area here is, is considerably darker than this area around the top. The reason for that is that this comb up here has only ever been used for honey. It's never been used for raising babies. This area here where it's dark, uh, has been used uh, for, for raising babies. The queen has laid eggs in there, which have become larvae and then pupae and then emerged as adult bees. And the reason it's dark is because each, the beginning of each cycle or the end of the previous cycle, a layer of propolis is added to the inside surface of the cell. And the reason for that is to protect the growing larva because the larva is uh, growing at a, at, a, at a remarkable rate over, over a period of um, about five days it puts on um, several hundred times its, its original weight and that means that it's very vulnerable at that stage um, to any uh, viral or, or bacterial pathogens that happen to be around in the vicinity. So propolis we know from, from research has both antibacterial and antifungal and antiviral properties. Now, given the uh, the way things are at the moment with a with a certain virus that seems to be making the rounds, it may be a good time to start thinking about uh, potentially using uh, nature's own anti antibacterial anti antiviral substance um, in, in the form of propolis. It's possible that this might have some beneficial uh, actions for us. Now, I'm not a doctor. I have no medical training whatsoever. Um, my knowledge of virology could be written on the head of a pin and still leave room for the Lord's Prayer. So uh, don't take my advice, and I'm not about to give, any, give you any advice, to be honest, but uh, I am not the person to ask questions of about virology. But I have read some research, and it seems to state fairly clearly that propolis has properties that we could find useful. Now here's, here's a lump of propolis, okay? The, the inside of cells obviously is a very, very fine layer of propolis, and you're not going to be able to extract that very easily except with solvents. But if you look around um, any beehive, if I point the camera here, you can see along this edge here, you can see if I scrape it with my knife, this is all propolis right here. There's, there's a little bit more there. The bees use propolis not only to protect their young, but also as a sealant. And you can see that where the, where the uh, frames have been resting on here, this is all propolis. So we can easily, when it's warm at least, we can easily remove it by gentle scraping. And you can see that within a very short time, in the, uh, you can actually accumulate a measurable quantity of propolis. There's not very much on this hive, actually. Some hives, um, some bees, some, some colonies are better at collecting it than others. But you can see that all, what I've got here was all collected from the, the edges around the top of that hive. You can see it's at this temperature, which is, I don't know, probably about 15 degrees centigrade. It's soft and malleable. It's very, very sticky. Um, it's been used particularly in, uh, in the east of Europe. I, I believe it's known quite widely over there as uh, Russian penicillin, which gives us a clue as to some of the things that it could be useful for. Um, but it contains substances which are known to have antibacterial, antiviral activity. So what does that mean for us? Well, one of its commonest uses is where you have uh, tooth pain, 
or mouth ulcers, anything basically to do with the mouth, gums, sore gums, anything like that, propolis works really well. It has uh, not only antibacterial activity, but it also has mild local um, anaesthetic properties too, so it reduces tooth pain rather well. And uh, if you have a, have a dental emergency and you can't get to a dentist quickly, then propolis may be something worth considering as a short-term pain relief. Um, it's, it, it can be eaten. I believe it is consumed internally uh, in some places for some things. I wouldn't, not something I would necessarily recommend, um, certainly not in quantity, because I'm not sure that the, uh, its internal activity it has been uh, terribly well researched yet, but um, something that I came across uh, a while ago uh, watching some YouTube videos was that uh, there are some people, I think it was in Germany, inhaling the vapour from um, a hive which must have uh, a high content, I suspect, of volatile oils from propolis because when you first open a hive and, and, and breathe in the atmosphere, um, one of the things that you, you, you very much notice is the smell of propolis. And I'll just drop that piece. Oops, here it is. Um, and it does have a resinous, uh, rather pungent smell, which is, I, I find very pleasant personally, but um, then I'm a beekeeper, so why wouldn't I? Um, it's possible that you could dissolve out the active ingredients from this. Uh, some of them dissolve in water, some of them dissolve in alcohol, but it, it, it is possible to make tinctures from um, propolis. You can buy propolis tincture, in fact, in health food shops. So, and I'm not going to say you should do this or you should do that or you should even attempt or try, try something that, that has medical implications, but it seems to me that if it works so well for bees, then it's something that we should consider. Maybe we could, um, maybe it's possible to uh, treat it in some way so that you can vaporize it and inhale vapor. Maybe that would be an interesting thing to do for a, a virus that attacks the, the bronchia, um, like the, the one that's around at the moment, which I won't name. Um, so it, it, clearly that if you're trying to deal with a virus that is um, that is in your uh, in your breathing system in your in your breathing tubes, it's no good eating this stuff. You've got to actually get it into your breathing tube somehow. That would seem to me to be a case for um, inhaling the the atmosphere of the hive. Uh, there may be some way that we could treat this. Maybe it's simply as simple as heating it. Maybe we could heat this um, and, and vaporize it carefully and um, inhale the vapor from that. Maybe that would be useful, I don't know. Um, if you have any thoughts about this, uh, any, particularly any, any direct experience of, of doing something like this, uh, perhaps you could add them in the, uh, add your ideas in the comments below. But it seems to me that this, this substance here, um, who knows, maybe it holds the key, maybe it holds one of the keys to dealing with um, human viruses could be. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you if you like these videos, please subscribe and click things down below. Um, I will put uh, relevant links to research in the uh, in the notes for this video. So uh, I know there is some, and I'll find it and put a link in for you below. Okay, so see you in the next one.